Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. It's another wonderful Sunday evening and it is, as always, our pleasure to bring you an interesting life story from what seems to be an ordinary folk but with an extraordinary life story. In this particular case today, we have a guy that prefers to call himself Peculiar. How? Why? He will tell us in the course of the program. But welcome to Desert Island Discs. My name is Simon Kasiati, as always, your host. The pleasure is uh, great on my end to have a man with an interesting name. It's an acronym, but you break it down for us in bits and pieces. JT Nyangenya. He is a doctor, PhD holder. I think acquired about age of 26. You tell us your life story and journey in education. You are a CPA, that's a certified public accountant. You are a CS, that is a certified, what, secretary. certified secretary. You are a, an, a, you are an owner, founder, and player in a basketball team that's uh, winning accolades across uh, the whole place, including the continent Africa. You run, what don't you do? Welcome to the program, JT. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. You do a million things. What's your day like? 48 hours? Uh, my day life is only, I can say, eight hours like any other person. <laughs> well, for us, we at least say we are 24 hours. How you manage to fit in all these things? Unfortunately, we want. <laughs> unfortunately you, can't, you can't add hours in, the, in, <laughs> the in, in our clock. It has to remain 24 hours. It's you now to know how to utilize the 24 hours. Yeah, tell us yeah. about yourself very briefly because, I mean, look, you're a jack of all trades, certainly a master of something since you are a PhD in something. Yeah. It's very important to get to know you a little more than just the titles that come before your name. Yes. Um, Simon, I'm, uh, I'm Jeff Teya. My real names are Jafet Teya Nyangenya. I'm born to the late Peter Moses Nyangenya and uh, old farm Murai Nyangenya. I was born in Kitale, Kenya. Kitale? Kitale. This is the closest you get to Uganda when you're on the yes, Kenyan yes, side. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Just this, um, just the other side of, of Mount Mount Elgon. Elgon. Uh -huh. I was born on 18th October of 1984. 84, just recently? I'm, I'm old man, you know, <laughs> just recently you're talking about uh, <laughs> the, kids of, the kids of 2000. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> I, I, I was actually born uh -huh. when, uh, when you had another president. Yeah, they, I think we had the Not the current president. president. <laughs> <laughs> so I was born that time. Uh, my nursery school was um, Nairobi. Let's get down to this uh, homestead where you were yeah. born. The yes. of your recollection. Yes. You certainly were not an old, an own child. Yes. Where are you? Um, um, we are four. 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 What One elder you? brother who is an engineer now. He's a uh -huh. civil engineer from University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He works in Kenya. I'm the second born. I have uh, one sister, the only sister, called Jennifer. Who follows you? Who, who follows me. Mm -hmm. You guys must have protected and Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did, I did. <laughs> and um, she's a doctor. She's working in Homer Bay County, a wow. government hospital. And then one younger brother called Caleb Mabuto. He's a businessman. Business. Currently doing his degree in business management in Nairobi. So I have one father, one mother, one elder brother, <laughs> one younger <laughs> sister, sister, and one, one younger yeah, brother. Yeah. For a guy that moves around with a calculator, I knew that you would drop around some uh, numbers here. So it's one 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 one, 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 one. <laughs> but then sadly, you have got so many titles, not just one title. Yeah. So you had to compensate for this one, one, one along the way to get so many, so many, so many later on. Not really. Mm -hmm. uh, as I was growing up, uh, I saw my father uh, trying to, to feed our family and to make us comfortable. And uh, my mother was a housewife. You so saw I, the yoke of yeah. toil on your father's My mother was shoulders. hardworking. Actually, I drew a lot of, a lot of inspiration for my mother mm -hmm. and my late father. Of course, uh, she was closer to you with the usual thing. Chiboko, I got Chiboko, and uh, as we move forward, I'll be telling you how. <laughs> no, from the look of things, it's how, not I was me. cheeky. <laughs> I was cheeky. I didn't. Uh, I got it. So my mother was a housewife, um, waking up at six. Uh, the waking you guys up also. Uh, going to the farm. And you know, Kitale is a maize, is a maize area. Oh, yes. So agriculture is our core. And then my dad used you to... You can hardly see anything in Kitale until about 9 a.m. in the morning. It's always foggy. Yes, 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 yes. But at 6, people are at the farm. People are out. Yes. That kind of culture really helped us. And my father, what I will not forget to say about my family is... Uh, our family is a staunch Adventist. 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 
So Saturdays, Saturdays, no, church. It, it closed out on Friday sunset. Actually, my work ethics, a hundred percent, is derived from there. So this early hard knock raising your father or your parents took you through. Yeah. A way of the vagaries of life ahead for you. Yes. Can we say without fear of contradiction that now you find wading through life's nooks and corners a little more like a walk in the park? More smoothly, more smoothly. I can tell you, my father was working in Nairobi. What was he doing? He was a mechanical, a mechanic, let me say. Let, let me not say mechanical engineering. His make hand it, was as firm as to make, to make it so, so, so <laughs> classy <laughs> and, you know, I have to be real. My father was a mechanic, but he had a diploma from Japan. So the Japanese, during Accredited that, him. they told him, can you advance? to a degree. As it's told by my father, he said, no, I have to stay with my family instead of going for four years in Japan. So wow. he sacrificed his education for, you guys. for us. And that's why I studied some of this qualification. You decided to say, okay, yeah. what my dad lacked, let me add for him. Let me add for him. And for my mom. <laughs> so my dad, like very that. interestingly, my dad decided to leave Nairobi to go to West Pokot. West Pokot is just near northeastern. No, no, Uganda. northwestern. Here, here, here. northeastern Uganda. Uganda. Northwestern Kenya. Kenya. <laughs> here, here. He said, "I better go to West Pokot. Get hard. How is it called? Um, that allowance they give you when you are working in hard areas. In hard, oh, yes. I don't know how it was called that uh -huh. time, but he was given that allowance so that he can." get an extra thousand shillings for the Ten kids for and for the family. If I can recall, when I saw the payslip, it was earning around 5,000 Kenyan shillings. Which is how much in Uganda shillings? I mean, you're the guy By now, the it's around uh, 180 to 200,000. With four children. To My dad used to write shopping, shopping for the month, wheat flour, sugar, blah, 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 blah. Toothpaste. And somebody might think that he's earning 100,000 Kenyan shillings or 5 million Kenyan shillings. Because we never lacked. Things were always there. Things were always there. From his budget, from his planning. He was a good planner. What was he repairing in Northern Pokot? There were cars, government or, cars. Oh, government I thought they were oiling guns. I mean, that's no, 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 no. <laughs> government cars. So we were there. Surprisingly, during our age, in our village, that is Surungai in uh, Kitale, mm -hmm. having a bicycle in 1992, you were a man. You were like a guy that has a VX now. Yes. My dad had a bicycle. Now, we were traveling Without using years. a bicycle from Kitale, Surungai, to West Pokot. No. That's how many kilometers? We used to walk. 500? No, no, no. From Kitale, from Surungai to, to where we were staying in um, Bendera, Kapenguria, it's so roughly around, roughly around 80 to 100 kilometers. How many? 80 to 100 kilometers. 80 to 100 kilometers. And this you travel from, on a bicycle? From out of 80 to 100, 50 kilometers, because it's, it's a hilly, it's a hilly. we used to walk. Myself and my elder brother. We started cooking at the age of six. Well, I, I'm sure later on you're going to tell me you have a, a marathon medal to your name. I mean, you don't walk those distances, <laughs> not a marathon medal. No, 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 no. <laughs> we used to walk from Surungai, Mile Nane. We pass the shortcut of uh, California. We go to Mile Saba. We go to Kesogon. We go to Makutano, we land Kapinguria. And this you are going to visit your father or that's your daily route for going to school? No. <laughs> we used to go, now, we, because my mother used to stay in Surungai and my father works in Kapinguria. So we used to come every weekend or two weeks we come. So you have to prepare psychologically. Next week? Next week I'm home. So we sit two of us behind when it is a slope. We move. My dad is in front. Tough. When I see kids of nowadays saying they can't walk one kilometer to school, I, I get surprised. Even when we were staying and where we go to school, it was around um, five kilometers. And you did that? I, I think I, the school name was uh, Karas Primary. We started in Karas Primary School. And that's why you did all these seven, eight? No, no, no. We did, um, we did up to P2. And then I think that time, 1992, 1993, there was an election in Kenya. And then there was a gentleman called Lotodo the F MP then said I sitaki madoa doa meaning I don't want people who are not in this tribe. Oh so we had to relocate but my dad stayed. 
now that's when I left Kapenguri Akaras and I went to Cherangani. Cherangani now was closer school to where my mom was. Oh, hey, mom, wow. Yes, and, and we used to do what is called putubishi. Futsubi, Barefoot. All the way. Eh? Mugu, mugu chini, mugu sawa. You go that to school kid, barefoot. Uh, why? Was because you didn't have No, no, the school, the, the, we no, came with shoes. The school said, no, you can't try to... No, 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 no. Culture. That's when I started playing football. The real football. Look and at this now. The dude. first one month, I was running away from, from the ball. Not football, the one you know. This one of Peppers. I Not be, running towards the ball. I used to run away. away from the ball. The first one month. Why? And then I... Because where I come from, there was the West Coast, there was those things were not there. And in Kitale, there are a lot of Luyas, there are a lot of Kalenjin, mm -hmm. it's a Cosmo place. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where we get the talent from Kenya. So I started playing football. I became addicted to football. I used to get canes because of football. I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will sacrifice lunch for, for, for Mafundi, which was called Mafundi. And my friends can, if they're watching, they can. They can justify There is Moses Wafula, we played with him, Musa. Pepela, one of those people. <laughs> yeah. JT, quite an incredible guy. On this program, we play music, JT. Yes. You've taken us through the early part of that hard knock upbringing that you went through. Mm. And I'm sure it's getting even tougher as we proceed with your life story. Yes. But first, let's play your first song and then return to more of your life story. Wow. The mm. first song, the first song will be the favorite of my father, my late father, and where he took us through. And I will go with the Adventist hymn, Anywhere with Jesus. Anywhere with Jesus. You can safely go. 508. Wow. Let's play this wonderful hymn coming in from JT as a tribute to his late father. When we return, it's more about his life story and how interesting the turns and twists of his hard upbringing have led a fine, soft skinned young man as he appears until we know that he's as hard as nails. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go Anywhere He leads me in this world below Welcome back, it's uh, Desert Island Discs and it is Dr. JT who is sharing with us his life story. His surname is Nyangenya. JT is an acronym for Japheth Japheth. Japheth. You know, the Japheth, there is Jafari, there is Jeff, there mm. is what? There's so Japheth. many. Those uh -huh. are gnomes. But mine is from the Bible. Japheth. Japheth. Wow. You have to finish with TH. And make sure that <laughs> peculiar. your is in the right place. But if you can't do that, uh -huh. JT or Jeff is good. You just said peculiar. You told us you're peculiar. Guys. Yes. What is it that makes you peculiar? Any of you? Okay, well, we've just seen a bit of your earlier upbringing. And clearly, that's peculiar. Yes, 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 yes. Now, in um <laughs> it's very interesting if 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 you can recall very well simon i think you are you're a very serious journalist then in 1999 government of kenya decided to retrench its workers and they were doing it in three phases there was the phase of march march april and then june july and september october my father was retrenched no. Oh. My father was lucky for the month of March, April. He was also lucky in the month of June, July. July. But he was not lucky in the month of September, October. By that time, we were studying at Cherengani Primary School. So my father picks the bicycle. My mom used to park for him. <coughs> Uji? No. Oh. There's some here in Uganda, you call it Bongo. Uh -huh. In Kenya, we, in, in our language, you call it Maruranu. Maruran. Milk. Sour milk. Yes. Sour milk. That's what we used to survive when we go to West Pokot. So we okay. put in a jerry can, you take posho with milk the whole week, and you are good. Posho with milk. That milk with and that milk. Wow. Because you are cutting costs, you are not earning that much. So my mama has done that, has packed for my father, he has put in uh, behind this bicycle, has tied it, the normal route. Mm. Now he is alone, and some posho behind, because he's alone. Mm -hmm. That Sunday evening, Monday reaches office. Mr. Nyangenya, you have a letter. A retrenchment letter. You can imagine. Children, I see. That time, most people died. 
the, I think the, the, the process of retrenching in Kenya wasn't done properly. Mm -hmm. Most people died. Committed suicide? Yes. Depression. Depression. Others committed suicide. It was bad. So in the evening, Monday evening, my mom That's sees good. my dad. Yes, what happened? You've never seen him on a Monday evening. To do what? Mm -hmm. We'll be working. Well, my mom is coming from the from the garden. Mm -hmm. That said, I'm breaking, going to join you. breaking, breaking the news yes. to my mother was the toughest because we were all praying. My father was a prayerful person. Even when he was short, he was short after he had prayed. My dad, when he reached home, the first thing he did with my mom is to pray. And then he gave my mom the letter. I've been sacked. He didn't even use the Gloria, the glamorous term of retrenched. People who know my, my late father will tell you, my late father was a strong man. He said, I have been sacked. I have been sacked. After praying, he gave him the letter. Housewife, retrenched, retrenched uh, husband. Me, I'm at high school, first year. Remember, Form 1, I'd come to Uganda, became my Advent secondary school. We were paying around 30,000 Kenya shillings. Around September there, the person who had brought me around didn't pay the fees. The fees was pocketed. So I was just from... Uh, from your visa. father gave someone... So my father never came to Uganda when I was... Uh, yeah, he gave Form 1, after P8, <clears throat> class 8. My father wanted, because I've told you, we're Adventists. So he my father really Adventist. wanted me, because my elder brother who wasn't as cheeky as I am, wasn't as naughty as I am, I was the naughtiest. So he was trying to, to curb my character. Clip at, you a little at, bit. at early age. Even when we were doing Pathfinder, he would cane me. I remember he cane me in Kakamega Kampori. People can attest to that. I don't, I don't fear saying it. People <laughs> and, remember and, when we were at uh, Seum camp, they caned me. And the caning was not just, you know, a slap on the back. No, no, no. It real was, caning. Uh, real caning. Industrial proportion. <laughs> really, people who know, a, who know him a. can tell you. It was real caning. And I always tell people, even my, my the background, mm -hmm. it's not as big as you think. It's because of the cane. <laughs> <laughs> It's the okay. case which I made you <laughs> It's the case that made, has made it to, to be big. I'll tell you the cane, the, the memorable cane before you finish the show. <laughs> I was cane. So here you are in Bugema. Your school Adventist, has been pocketed. Adventist secondary. So in September I had to go back home. That is 1999, and that's the time when he's retrenched. He's retrenched. Tough. But my mother was a strong woman. That's why I told you. I had two strong parents, and that experience is the one that shaped my life. Mm -hmm. Remember, from somebody who has two hundred thousand, and I thank the government of Kenya for retrenching my father, because I wouldn't be the person I am if it wasn't for that retrenchment. So that adversity, that calamity that befell your father, yes, turns out to be the wind. That propels you to the heights that now let me tell you my father because he's a mechanic he says i want to make what make a right my mother being um a farmer thinks and says i want a hardware so my father starts looking around where will i put the hardware where will i put the garage the garage my mom says i want my hardware in kachibora give me forty thousand kenya shillings i don't know how much i overheard from the window i don't know if she was, she was given. But my mom started a hardware, started a hardware. If I can recollect of 30 to 40,000, 20,000 Kenya shillings to 40,000 Kenya shillings, if my dad gave her that money, that's around 1 million Ghana shillings. Did he have it? From the, from the retrenchment money, she was given 80,000. Oh. That's around um, 3 million. So 80,000, mom says Kenya I want half. I want half, you take half you with take your garage. Half, you can't take your uh, form, B1. did he know? My, we don't drink. I have mm -hmm. never tested alcohol, I've never tested cigarettes. And people always get uh, surprised of that. Never, never in my, in my life, because of the pathfinder thing I was telling you. Not that it's bad, even pork, I can go and buy you beer, I'll buy you pork, but me, no. Because that's how I was brought. So how do you quench your thirst? Anyway, you Soda. Know. Soda is good, juice is good. 
I, there's a time even uh, when I, when I was doing when I was starting my career, I would go out with friends. They take ten crates, um, one crate of um, of beer because there are three. They have to add for me soda. We move out. I've taken a lot of Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my dad, my mom <clears throat> starts up a hardware. They they they, they start the hardware in Kachibora. And my dad goes to the Bible because of the prayer of the first one. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, peculiar people. And he calls the hardware peculiar hardware. That's where peculiar words come from. Peculiar hardware. One was in Western Kenya, a place called um, between uh, Kamkuyua. I forget the name. And um, um, Kamkuyua, Western part of or Bungoma. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he started the first hardware there. My father coming home, you know, garage, didn't work out. He had to change the hardware to Mile Saba, the Kenyan, uh, the, the side of Kapenguria. My mom established in Kachibora. That's when I went, after my high school, I had to go to that startup. To work in there? To work in there. Instead but of did employing... you continue education yes, in Yes, I did. I did. No, 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 no. I went back home. You I left. They couldn't afford. How? Tell me how. Transport only here is like you have finished the entire capital, which he has. <laughs> how will I come to Uganda? So I had to locate to Kenya. So you went to what school? I went to Suwerwa Secondary a, School. A local school. A local Kenya. school. A local school. Because yeah. I couldn't get admission. And you know, curriculum of Uganda and Kenya is different. It, different, it affected yes. my education, actually. My so high school were education. you a day scholar? I was, a bo I was in boarding. You were in boarding school. But for two months. And then I told my dad I don't go. I will not go back there. Mm -hmm. And then our neighbor got for me another school nearby called Charangani. Where you would commit? No. Boarding, Again, boarding. Boarding. St. Mark's High School. Mm -hmm. That's where I finished my, my, senior, my senior form. So you finish and say, okay, I'm going to this startup to lend a hand. Yes. I go there. My mom will wake up in the morning, tea without sugar, and make posho because we have a lot of maize there. So she makes posho, takes with the tea, tea without sugar. That's uh, her breakfast and her lunch. If she, if she makes 1,000 Kenya shillings in a day, she has made a lot of money. She will walk like this. No one's touch. Uh, 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 that day she has made money she doesn't want. After a year, two years, the rest is history. What kind of history? That's how we managed to come to school. After one year, she had made it. She grew. I, I, I was carrying, I was carrying iron know. sheets. 30 gauge, 32 gauge. I was uh, measuring, you know, nails, nails. come, nails come in, um, nails come in bags. bags. And then I have to measure all of them, six inch, five inch, four inch. The whole day I'm measuring, carrying. My dad used to go to Nairobi, Gikomba, buy buy holes, buy hammers, come and sell at whatever. So my dad stopped selling and became a distributor yes, from Nairobi to my mom. Mm -hmm. The garage, he put a clip onto it. Ah, garage now became another story. Mm -hmm. She opened a second hardware. We opened the third hardware. Wow. We bought our own land. We bought our own land. We bought our own property. The rest is history. And you were in there? I only it. worked there for a year. How and then after six months, they told me go for, go for, go for computer studies after senior form four. I work in the morning, in the afternoon I go for my okay. classes in Kitale. For me to cut cost when they give me twenty shillings or thirty shillings for my transport, I became a tout. Because I was every, I was a regular customer. I carry come in here and get twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I say, and I save my small money. And there are some cars during that time, they used to know that uh, Taya, you mean in Kenya, they call me Taya. Yeah, yeah. Taya is coming at, uh, at 11, it's going to Kitala, he will come back. So I also worked as a tout for those three months as I was waiting for my Results. admission. Our result comes in, in March. Uh. Yeah. So in August, my father was going to a campory in Nairobi, Jamhuri Park. Mm -hmm. People will remember this, 2002 August. We used not to have campories in August, but this one was in August. We used to have it in December. My father and I used to, and I was admitted now in Bugema University. 
-hmm. Uganda. So, my dad, will he bring me to Bugema University or go to Kampuri? He had to make a very hard choice. So, for you, you guess for me. I think he went for the camp. He went for the camp. <laughs> I had to come alone to Bugema University. That's how life goes. <laughs> before, before I tell you the, the university one, high school, 2002, July, I was a prefect, by the way. So because I came there, Form 2, so I survived the mono thing. So I come in Form 2. I was the last in class. In the class. Because uh, in, 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 um, in St. Mark's, they used to do end term, when we open, and mid term. So end term, and beginning form part and parcel of that term. Mm. So this end term is for next term. And then we open, when you open the school, you also start with the exam. So I had not done end term. I had not done mid term. I had only done, I had not done end term, beginning term. I only done mid term. Mid -term. I was number 113 out of 114. <clears throat> yeah, there was this one guy that shielded you from the and, and 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 I remember Mr. Malaki calling Jafet Ter Nyangenya, 113 out of 114. Everyone looked at me. Terrible. It affected me. The next time when I came, I was the most improved student. Long and short, you are now a Dr. CPS. Yes, and yes, yes. Let's play your next song, Jafet. Um, Ruth of Andros, uh -huh. that's with my father. <laughs> you loved your dad to bits. But importantly, he you also me. have an incredible choice of music. It's a good text. Thank you. That's with my father. If you have fond memories of your father, I'm sure this is a song that you will very much relate to. It's chosen by J.T. Nyangenya. And, of course, we continue to share his life story here on Desert Island Discs. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. Welcome back. It's Desert Island. This, uh, yes, I trust Dr. Nyangenya to share with you an interesting life story in the best way he can narrate it out. So here you are. <laughs> we just closed off when you've just been admitted to a, a university in Uganda, but then you took us back to your high school time and how you came last in a class, and then the next time you were the most improved. Student. Yeah, yeah. Courtesy of Mr. Malaki, I remember him. He was a good dean of students, mm -hmm. director of studies then. So, for Thea, Mm -hmm. You see now, coming from Uganda, going to Kenya, curriculum different, changing. They tell you to repeat. I didn't want to repeat mm -hmm. because I don't, I, I don't believe in repeating. Just proceed. Uh, proceed. So form four, form three. I'm in the prefect entertainment. Mm -hmm. July, a commotion happened in class. I was uh, sent home for school fees. I come back. Commotion happened in class, and I was involved in that commotion. Students fighting. Why were you fighting, JT? You know, one of the things which people have never understood about me is I'm a very straight person. Very straight person. Two, two individuals in school had done something funny and I was around telling everyone what these two people have done. And then the, the same information reached to <laughs> the person who got to know that I've said blah, 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 blah on some people. So he becomes physical. And that time I remember Capcomoy was on duty, Mr. Capcomoy. The next day I'm home. I reach home, I come with my father the next day. Mr. Soy couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, discuss it. Couldn't. Mm. He couldn't discuss it. They suspended me for one month. I got Chiboko. Every single day of the no, one month? No, I got Chiboko that day, that night. It was tough. And if anything would have happened to me, probably my father wouldn't have been dead by now. Because he really beat me. I fainted. What? I fainted. I've never told this one on air, but I fainted. I he beat me to pop. Since that day, he has never beaten me. You said, I've had it. I must change my course of life. No. Mm. And even if I do something wrong, since that day, he wouldn't touch me. He was also surprised what happened. Because he really beat me for like uh, two hours. In because in our home we have we had a house, and then we had a small forest behind. 
the Vita was in the forest. No, mm. the canes were got from the forest. <laughs> <laughs> so he deforested the whole. Thing. Like five canes. This big one is not this big. Why? What no. are you doing? Did I take you to school to to fight to do funny things if or you to want do to what? Fight, let's give it up to each other. Yes, he, he beat me. Long and short, let's get now to your university. You go through university in Uganda. Yeah, it's tough. Now I come to university. I remember it was 21st August. My dad goes to Nairobi. I come to university. Um, I start life in Bugema, in a dormitory. He gave me pocket money of around 20,000 Uganda shillings. I start life. He pays the fees and I start studying. And then I meet a gentleman called David Mudoka. He's a Kenyan. He was doing CPA Kenya. Okay. Because with this experience of uh, suspension, experience of working in the hardware, and the way my mom has grown, my thoughts were, Into I have money. to do a business course. Now, which business course is hard? They tell me accounting. But when I reach the university, they tell me finance is more harder and it's more. So I do, I do a double major. Bugema University uh, has a curriculum which is US-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. You can do a double major. <clears throat> so I did um, uh, BB accounting and finance, double main. Wow. For the four years I was there. Now, David Muthoka tells me, if you want to increase your employability, you have to do CPA or a professional course. So at the age of 19, when I'm, when I'm in university, I get to know that you need to do CPA or SCCA or SIPS or CIMA, you know, SIPS is going out to procurement. Okay. Now me, I wanted in business. So I said, I'm going to do finance and I tell my father. So when I go back, I tell my father, I want to do CPA, pay for me. He was very happy. Still in Bugema. No, no, no. Uh, C CPA elsewhere. is Kenya because I'm a Kenyan. I don't want to do CPA in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And, and by that time, if you ask anyone, it will tell you CPA Kenya at that time was grounded, even up to now. It's, it, CPA Uganda wasn't that prominent. Mm -hmm. So I do CPA Kenya. I was sitting at Namirembe Resource Center. That was the exam center. We used to have one exam center in Uganda. Because most Ugandans, most top accountants in Uganda are also doing CPA, CPA Kenya. Kenya. So the, 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 the sitting exam center was here. So I tell my father, my father get excited. I think I'll share with you the letters he wrote to me mm -hmm. through Wakamba then. He, wow. he posts the letters in Kitale, takes you a week mm -hmm. or two. Receive and it. in the letter, there is 1,000 Kenya shillings in as your pocket money. You read the letter, you're happy. Pocket the money. And, and you move on. So I do CPA Kenya and double major. That was busy. Same time. Because of the experience I've had. And because David Muthoka told me, if you want to increase your employability, Professional By that time, it was CPA level three. For me, I was 30. Trust me, you, I finished CPA before him. You're kidding me. I'm telling you. And sometimes he tells me, Jeff, you are my mentor. Yet he was my mentor. I finished CPA before him. Because you had nothing else that was distracting you? Books. I mean, university. You, 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 you go one hour, you? two hours, you're finished CPA. Even now, for me, I knew if I do my CPA, my degree become easier. The first year I didn't do well, but the second year I was top. When they brought Samwa Kum Laude in Bugema, I was among the people who were, who were doing Samwa Kum Laude. Kasumba was my classmate. We studied together in Bugema. You know, the interesting part is, at Bugema, there is this Bible, health principle, blah, 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 and then core courses and cognate courses. So for me, I said, when I don't have a class, let me go and study my CPA. And then there's something in Bugema which is called a work program. So you can do some few things and then they credit your account. So I used to go to accounts office, do some bank reconciliation and learn. Wow. So when it reached 2005, I started now coming to, to Kampala, to the audit firm. I wanted to understand how this audit firm does their daily work, mm -hmm. do their daily work. So I learned to somebody called Ojara, the late Ojara, made solid in peace, he introduced us to some people in Kampala. Mm -hmm. And then we move on. I get experience. I start doing auditing. I remember Why that- still pursuing your degree? Yes, I've not finished. By the time I was finishing my degree, I was finishing my CPA, double major CPA, with a little bit of experience. You were the hottest cake in town. Yes. Who took you up? The big no. five? <clears throat> no, no, mm. no, no. I didn't go to the big five. When I was doing my last paper, 
Remember, I was 30. There's some CPA, you know, is not an easy paper. No, I'm told. Uh, so, there are some elderly. You can do it for a lifetime. Yes, there's, mm. there's a gentleman called Aloysius Chimera, if the names are correct. Aloysius is correct, but the second name, I'm not so sure. The gentleman told me, man, I've been seeing you sweeping, sweeping. What is happening? Uh, Come, let's work. Can you, can you do a job? Can I connect you somewhere? Because I see you are not a bad person. And that's why I ended up to. I ended up at AA and L Associates, Goldstead, Agri Kankunda. My first salary was one million. One million Uganda shillings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I start working. I work for Agri. And my objective was to learn and learn and learn. After that, I registered directly for my master's. Became my university. Mm -hmm. My master's. And Bugema University gives me assistant lecture at wow. 22 because when i graduated they gave me an accolade mm -hmm. for, for for honors for graduating both for with cpa and a double major my finance was first class my wow. my my accounting was uh, second class upper but when you combine the two second class upper so they gave me uh, honors with uh, with the cpa so i registered for my masters my dad wants me go to go back to kenya he comes with um, with uh, churchmen and church elders mm -hmm. to convince me to go back to Kenya. And you're saying, no, I have I will not go to Kenya. Because he had known that I'm a naughty person. I may not be able to be alone. But so he tells me, I'm not paying for your master's. So yourself. I started thank paying you. for myself. I say, thank you, my dad. I will work for it. So for my master's, henceforth, I start hustling and paying for myself. Wow. Yes. So... I do my master's, I finish, they give me a lecturer job, I move from uh, Goldstead, I go to Pinnacle Group of Company. If you remember, we used to have a security firm called Protectorate SPC. Yes. So I become the accountant. From there, uh, Pinnacle buys Protectorate. Protectorate. I played a major role in that acquisition. Um, um, they give me a group finance manager. I see our interests were not uh, going in tandem. I moved to my real estates. I was referred to, as you see all the jobs, I never applied a single job. Mm -hmm. It was through referral. So a, a lady whom I studied with at Gemma University called Rebecca Bigumira referred me to Fred, who was um, uh, the right-hand man of uh, Huda mm -hmm. uh, um, for this position. After, after like, so three months, I take the job at Mary Estate. Maria? My Erie Estate. Mary okay. Estate is a flower farm, second mm -hmm. largest flower farm. Then, okay. after Rosebud, we used to export flowers to UK, US, and, and Europe. And that's how my career starts. But yes, there is what <coughs> we call running a gruesome education spree like you did. Hard nosed career of numbers such as you're doing what was happening in your private life were you even able to afford time to go to pray on saturday yes i used to pray i used to pray very much well hang out with friends go party uh, hanging out I, I am not a fan of party i actually love being being alone uh -huh. yeah, I, i'm a, people say i'm a sanguine people say <laughs> i'm an extrovert <laughs> but yes i i talk i'm very outgoing but uh, can't get you out of that. Uh, they can't get me out of that. But I love being alone, wow. meditating, thinking, writing down. You know. Let's play the next one. When we return now, it's more about uh, the finer things in your career as it progressed. Um, the next song, um, country music. Mm -hmm. And I will give you the chance Just to, choose. to choose for you a country song. Yes, uh -huh. Kenny Rogers. <laughs> You give me the best of yours. The best of mine. Yeah. Well, Kenny Rogers, the guy that leaves you no chance of um, picking out what you think is the best song that I can do. But I think Coward of the Cowards just comes in very handy. It may not be within your age bracket, but... <laughs> good one, good one, good one. I like particularly that line in the song where he says, sometimes you've got to fight when you are a man. You have to fight. You can't run away from a fight. A peculiar mind fights. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. It's Des and this son of chosen for him, a coward of the county, for his listening pleasure. And that's JT Nyangenya. Desert Island Discs on 91.3.
Capital FM. Welcome back to the cell and the streets. Uh, Dr. JT Nyangenya, a man famed for acquiring a PhD at, um, you know, tender age of 26, did you say? 30. 30. Yeah. That's uh, a marvel still. Yeah. Let's get down there. I mean, the last we spoke, you had just acquired the master's, you were moving jobs, you were becoming quite a bit of a professional in your field of accounting. Yeah. What then drove you to go and pursue a PhD? You see, Life sometimes becomes tough, and you, yes, you you I'd planned, mm -hmm. but I I really wanted to 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 finalize my 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 life. Mm -hmm. You know, at twenty six get married, at twenty seven get my PhD. You know, but it didn't work that way. So when I finished my masters, I start looking for for an institution which can admit me for PhD. And I really wanted a PhD in finance. So I look around, I get most of them is um, uh, uh, DBA, Doctorate of Business Administration. Mm -hmm. and I did, I, for me, I didn't want DBA, I wanted PhD. So my friend in Kenya tells me there is um, a PhD in, in accounting or finance from uh, Jomo Kenyatta. So I, I place my application and lucky enough, I find there is a weekend program for PhD. So I apply and I, I, I get enrolled. I start every weekend, not flying, uh -uh. bus. Take your bus in Nairobi. On Friday, on my bus. Saturday you're in class? No, but no, that, Sunday. Mm. So Saturday you'd... Friday press. evening. I'm an Adventist, remember. Friday evening, I pick a bus here at 6, 7.30. I travel, in, Malaba, I arrive the next morning. morning. I go to my hotel, sleep. Sunday, I go to class. Sunday evening, I'm back. back. Same schedule, same. But let me ask, as an Adventist, isn't there so much you miss, especially in your case, that was taking place on Saturdays? Some, yes. But, uh, but, but you cannot uh, compromise but, but that, you, No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm, I can't compromise. It depends. I'm not that conservative. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, like, the, like your dad was. Yeah, like my dad, <laughs> my dad was. But there are some occasions which I, uh, there are some things which I don't suffer. Okay. Yeah, and things are changing. So, like traveling, you know, the Bible says uh, ad, uh, on Sabbath you don't need to cook, you don't need, but people now cook. It's not like the old age, my dad's time, where you cook on, you Friday, cook on Friday. And then you. Then you, you ate my own on Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Ah. But now people cook and things have changed. So I used to travel on Friday. Uh, Classwork is uh, on, Sunday. on Sunday. Sunday uh, evening, evening I'm back. Monday morning you are on the grind. Work. You can imagine that kind of schedule. I never missed a class. In 2012, on a Sunday, 1st July, after I just finished taking tea with my brother. My brother, you, I, I, sometimes when I am in Nairobi, I used to go to, uh, to go to my brother's place. If he's around, I stay with him so that I can cost, cut cost on um, rooms and, um, and hotel. So that time, we were together on 1st July 2012. I remember it very, very well. My brother picks me from class. We go take a cup of tea and yams and uh, chapo. Takes me to the bus. At 7.45, I get a call from Eric Ngare, my neighbor from home, and we started together at St. Mark High School. He tells me, hello, Jeff, how are you? Have you had anything from home? I said, no. Now, this gentleman <laughs> has not called me or has never called me since high school. Now I'm wondering, why is he calling me now? So, curiously, I pick a call, my phone, and I'm dialing my dad's phone, phone number. It's not going through. Mm -hmm. He just asked you that question and hung up. Hung, 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 hung up. I was between Limuru now, mm -hmm. coming to Nakuru. I call my mom. The phone is not going through. 7.50. I call my brother. My brother is not picking. He picks after he calls me back. I tell him, have you had anything from home? 
He says, no. After 10 minutes, I call him back, nothing. So I get courage and I call our neighbor called, um, the elder, eldest person called Poland Ongel. Mm -hmm. I call Ongel. The first thing he asked me, How have you heard? I say, have you heard the what? I say, tell me the truth. And then he tells me, yes, 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 yes. Thugs came home. They were around seven. They shot. That's Poland. I tell him, they shot. He just tell me the truth. I can hold it. And then he tells me, seven thugs came home. They shot your father. He didn't make it. Yeah. And then I ask him, what about mom? And he tells me, oh, my mom is alive. Can I talk to her? He said, no, I can't talk to her. Tough guy. JT, if this could make you feel better. You said something about being prayerful. I'm sure you know your father is in a better place. It was tough. Send it. They shoot. You did the tour and go home immediately after you get that call. Yes, you did. Those guys shot my dad. Now, <clears throat> I call my brother, I tell my brother, my dad is gone, we have to go home, we have to go home. My brother goes to the bus. He hadn't had a thing, you broke he, the news. I am the one who broke the news to him. Mm. He was a strong man. He goes to the bus, he books two seats, mine and his, so that they can pick me on the road going home. That time our bus also got a problem. And where it got a problem was in the middle of the Muru, in the middle of the of the um, of the forest. If you Band remember forest. No no Ban Forest is the Doret. It is after Limuru, I don't know the name of the place, somewhere there there's some forest there. So when they were coming from Nairobi, the bus refused to stop. And it booked for me a seat. So they passed. So I had to sleep up to the next morning. My brother went and went home. So for me, the next morning, took it, uh, Matatu, uh, Naivasha, Naivasha Nakuru, Nakuru and Doret. By two, I was in Kitale. Straight to the mortuary. Yes, and my dad was lying there. He was shot four times. The one which murdered him, they hit him here. It removed the throat and it removed the entire head. Another one down here, it removed the entire thing. Or because they had come to a few know. things. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Rumor has it, rumor has it, they're young guys from our homestead. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. They just wanted money. I don't know. I don't know. You never bothered to court. We went to fight. court. We went to court. We found even the gun that murdered my dad. The next six years was tough years in our life. Seeking justice. 
seeking justice. And, and that's the reason. And that's the reason I'm doing law. You are pursuing a law degree. I'm a third year at UCU doing law. In that case, one time, I'll need to bring it up. We don't stop him. One time. Justice has to come to. Why did they kill him? They would have, they would have, they would have cut his legs. They would have cut his hands. But leave him. If you wanted you money. With me, so every, everything first hand. Because my, our houses were like this. This is the kitchen. This is the bedroom, the main house. So my dad came with his car, packed the car, went in the house with my mother in the evening at seven, as it's the norm, prayed, prayed got the money, put it on top. My oh, mom, yeah. because there, was, there were only two at home, my mom went to the kitchen. When they went, entered the kitchen, somebody came with a gun. Said, give me the money. No, mm. where is Muse? My dad had the commotion and they were lucky because my dad was very strong. So when he moved out of the main house like this, pop. so there were three already. So there's this one holding my mom. There's this one, this other side with the gun. That's the one which shot him from this side. And then there's this one who was behind. There was a drum behind the uh, water drum. So he was yeah. hidden there. And from the, the investigators, they were saying, he, that guy must have been lying low. That's why he managed to hit from down coming up. So he got one from behind. And then when he was running to hold this one and taking the gun up, it finished the entire finger here. So it came, you know, oh. and then finished everything this side. My suspicion is my dad must have recognized one of them. Oh, that's why they never gave him a chance to leave. My mom witnessed everything. So they took him to the bedroom, picked the money, dragged her. They wanted even to shoot her on the, when they were moving. And the car is, because they used the, my dad's car. My dad was moving. The, my mom laid down. They tried to pull her up so that they can finish. No one wanted to do that. So they left her lying like 200 meters from home. By the time people came, they already left. So the lifeless body was then picked. Was not, was then picked. And that's how he was. Uh, that's how he rested. Picking the pieces from such a, a gruesome experience is not something one can even try to wrap their head around. Yeah. But gladly, you seem to be picking up the pieces in a positive direction. You see, the other things motivated by that act to do other things. True. The funny part is. Um, After the death of my father, people, relatives, wanted us to throw away our mom. Why? That's the fight I fought. People are not easy in this world. And that's when I grew up and I said, you have to grow up. They thought she had masterminded this. Those were the things they were saying. How come but, survive? but I can tell you, my mom is a strong person. It was a tough journey. It was a tough journey. Four, five years down the road, it was a tough journey. I'm happy she's still alive. And under your protection? Yes, we had to protect her. I told my friends, I told my relatives, my mom has been with my father for all this long. She cannot do anything. These were thugs. Mm. It was a planned thing. These were thugs. And she stood by it up to now. The best thing we got the gun. Unfortunately, our court system never helped Very us. Really. Yeah. But like you said, it will come. Way around it. it will come. Japheth, long and short is today you're not in employment. Yes. You have since acquired your PhD. Yes. You are now pursuing a law degree. Yes. Perhaps even after the LLM, LLB, you're going to go for LLM. And PhD. And possibly PhD. Yeah. When will this stop? Uh, by 40, I'll stop. How far are you from that? Age? By 40, I'm around four or five years from there. I'll stop studying. 
and now make money. Won't it by then be an addiction? Mm. I'm addicted now. So how are you going to stop the addiction? Uh, even when I started the uh, LLB, it was tough for me to go and sit an exam because mm. I'm used to lecturing and giving exam. So I remember the first test was um, critical thinking, writing skills. It was my first test. I spent one hour without writing anything. And I remember I failed miserably. I got two out of ten. The lecture. But, but after that, uh, I came up. My first semester, I think, my first semester I got a first class. Second semester I got a first class. Third semester I got a first class. Fourth semester I got a first class. I don't know. Third semester is with COVID and other <laughs> problems. <laughs> I also got a first class, but we're moving. Uh, hopefully, we. it's tough now, but uh, hopefully, I'll. Uh, if I get second class upper, that's my target. I'm not targeting first class. Those ones, I'm leaving it for, for, the, younger for the younger people because my target is not theirs. If I can get second class upper, I'm happy. And when I finish my LLB, I will invite you to be the MC. I think I'll have retired from the MCing part of it. You have to be the guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll charge you a premium. Eh? No problem. Now, as we conclude this edition and prepare to play your next song before we can go in for our last bit. Yes. You are also involved in sport now. Yes. You appropriate a basketball team. Yes. I'm trying to draw the next scene. I'm trying to see you, the academician, the straight, uh, like, arrow guy, religious person, and now sport. Nowhere in your past have you told us that you played any sport seriously, except football. Yes. Uh, you know, when I played football in primary, my dad had to, in high school, my dad had to come to school and tell people, tell our teachers, this gentleman should not uh, do any sports here. So I went to drama. Even when I went to drama, he came and said, no you shouldn't be, yes, he has to concentrate on studies. So in 2010, my entrepreneurship journey starts way back when I finished university. 2010, I start setting up my, my, my farm because I knew business is the only way you can create wealth. So at YMCA, there is um, a petrol, I think there's a petrol station. Mm -hmm. On top there, I had uh, a full floor of an office. Wow. Over the weekend, on Friday, I used to see people going to YMCA for basketball. Friday night life. Yes. Night. And I always said, man, and they are very happy. So I tried once. That's where I fell in love with UCU. I think that time UCU was playing power. And power, how fans UCU have fans. People were like this. That's where my basketball journey begins. Never played it, never done it, never but played. you just enjoyed the high octane revs. I love the momentum, the intensity for two hours. Your stress goes off and you concentrate in the game. And I got addicted. And you got to learn the game, the walks, the what, the everything. Everything I got, I, I got to know mm -hmm. about basketball. So I finished that. Um, uh, I started supporting UCU uh, for those years. 2015, UCU goes to the final. I think 2017, 2017 there, they go to the final. They are beaten by City Oil. I got annoyed. I said, you mean every... 2015, it was scare you. They get beaten. The next year, no one is beating. UCU comes, the game of seven, they are beaten. 2019, the same thing. So in 2017, I say, I must have my own team. You would, didn't want to be a fan. No, I was asking, supporter. what is City Oil doing that these other teams are not... Cannot do. Cannot do. So I start the journey of, um, of uh, forming the team. I walk around, they tell me that you cannot form a team, they, you cannot go to NBL because it is full, you know? So one, in 2018, okay. everything is, uh, you know, in the system. 2018, I think late, I was doing a presentation in Imperial Royal, and then Freedoms, I see Freedom. Freedom is the founder of JKL. After the presentation, I go to him, I say, aren't you the one uh, aren't you the owner of um, JKL? JKL says, just Yes, I'm the owner. Leaving. That's uh, basketball. Yes, team. yes, just keep leaving. JKL Dolphin. Yes, I'm the owner. I tell him, I want to form the team. Can you, whatever? He said, No, no, no. Let's have coffee and we'll talk about it. So the next day he comes to office and you say, Let's move the momentum. I get shares and we move. The rest is history. Let's play your next one. When we return, it's how that is also faring on in your life and, of course, the prospects for further. Yeah, career growth and development. Yes. Um, the next song is uh, Four Days Late, but still on time. Wow, that's a beautiful hymn. It's this a, is a, a story of Lazarus. Dedicated <laughs> to my mother and my late father. It's not too late to do anything. You sort whatever it is that gets to be sorted. Yes. 
beautiful song on a Sunday evening such as this one. Indeed, the song is very clear and succinct that the Lord may be four days late, but he is always on time. Can you say that about yourself? Desert Island Discs. Welcome back, it's Desert Island Discs. It's uh, JT Nyangenya, a celebrated accountant, CPA, CS, DR, soon to be a uh, lawyer. Come on, what haven't you done? And now, basketball entrepreneur. Yes. You just told us how you just decided to form your own team because of the disappointment you picked from a team that you supported and was not winning. Yeah. Long and short is JK Dolphins, which now you own <laughs> winning. Are you winning? Go to the numbers. Numbers never lie. I'll get me the calculator. Back, back to back. Back to back. <laughs> Champions. Kidding. That's the lady. The ladies. JK Lady Dolphins. 2018 champions. After KCC and UCU dominated, we came and we took the champion. 2019, back to back. The first lady team from Uganda to win zone five. KCC tried, they never got it. UCU tried, they never got it. We went, our maiden entrance to zone five boom we beat equity kenya we beat kpa kenya those are well-funded teams and we got the trophy wow we are defending the trophy this year how do you run this whole basketball thing how do you pick the players i mean just how do you run a team you just go buying around because you mean you're an accountant you have the money yeah um not really money the, the first when we came it was a, the team was formed in 2015 so it's hard to, it's to break. Team. Yes. So we went to the D League, uh, the lower division. Mm. Uh, we came to the upper division, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we we got the cream, the la cream, from the teams, and we wanted to to break the monotony. But now our model is, we have the academy. Now we have four teams in the league. We have JK Junior Lady Dolphins. We have JK Dolphins, JK Junior Dolphins, and then we have the senior team. So the JK Junior team acts as a feeder to the, the senior, senior team. team. Now, how do we get this, this junior team? This is from academy. The academy players are promoted to the junior team. And then the junior team to the senior team. How do you choose those to join the academy? Our program is that we have scouts. Mm -hmm. We go up country, northern Uganda, eastern Uganda. Oh, really? And Not then, these top schools around Kampala? Uh, and and we and want the brand to attract. The Kampala ones have the opportunity. We want the brand to attract the Kampala one. But if you want to get tall, you know, there's position in basketball you need to get uh, you know tall lean chap especially the uh, position four five you need mm -hmm. to get tall people and you can only get them from you know so we get them scholarship from primary level to to high school and then to university we have uh, averagely in our academy we have averagely 200 uh youths athletes wow. and then in the university what incentivizes from, them to be in there Sports, mm -hmm. some of them love sports. Genuinely. Genuinely. And those are the ones who want passion. And they are the heart. talented. Yes. If you now you find somebody with uh, uh, talent and uh, he has, um, he has um, passion, but passion. maybe has no financial uh -huh. those are the, strength those are our to continue their education. Those are our targets. Those are our targets. And then we provide them scholarship. We provide for them scholarship. Oh. And then for us at the club, we get some pocket money. Like now we have around 15 students in, in university, around uh, 15 uh, high school, mm -hmm. and then many below, below that, so many. Jaffet, do you ever see yourself outside Uganda, uh, back to your native Kenya? Yes. Because uh, 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 you seem to have entrenched yourself so deeply in here. My vision uh, for JT Group first is um, to have a group that is uh, in East Africa, that is mm -hmm. Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and uh, Rwanda. Rwanda, that's one. Two, I'm looking, um, I'm planning 10 to 15 years I should be a minister in Kenya. A minister in? In Kenya. What are you doing at the moment to ensure that happens? Are you running for a member of parliament position? You have elections coming? The best thing with Kenya is uh, ministerial positions are for technical people. Okay. Not politicians. Yeah, but then the politicians to know you, you must also some spar up a little bit in the politics. It will come, it will come, it will come. First thing wow. first, let me first finish my law school, first deal with uh, the other people, and then uh, I will deal with other legislation later and how I will strategize myself. 
but my target is by 2030-2032, I should be somewhere. You have projections of 2030? Yes. Written and mastered properly how we will move. Are you just on not being shy of saying you want to be president of Kenya? No. It will come if it will come. But, but for you, you, but you for the cabinet mm. for, for the cabinet secretary mm -hmm. as it's called cabinet minister mm -hmm. that's what I'm sure. There must be something you're not telling on the program. Ah, uh, that's what I'm very the sure. No, I am. I, I have told you the story how mm. I've grown up, mm -hmm. and um, and um, even before that, I want to go probably to World Bank. I want to go help people internationally. The way I'm helping basketball, I want mm. to give back, help someone. That someone will help me. Jafet, you know, on that Friday. Mm. Evening up that hill where the three guys won the cross. Yes. The guy in the middle says, It's done. But in a few hours, I will be in my kingdom. Yes. Remember the other guy? Yes, yes, yes. Remember me. <laughs> 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 yes. I, don't wait to be president, remember me. Even now, please keep me on speed dial. Let's have this conversation. You see, you, you see Simon, in life, what I've come to learn. Mm -hmm. If you focus on your goals and you put everything towards it, you put your energy, you put your passion, and you work towards it, God will guide you towards it. But tell me something. Are, you that, there. are you that structured? I mean, I, I invite you for a conversation about your life story. And you show up with a calculator here. Yes. Why? I mean, if you want to calculate your age, I, 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 I was just intimidating you with the calculator. I, I, I mean, looks like. <laughs> For a moment, I thought you were an executive member of the Stingy Men Association. You move around with the calculator. Uh, I, I think you need to admit me in that, in that association because the information running around. Hey, is that, is, I am one of you them. are the chairman. <laughs> I'm told you are the chairman Western Western branch of Uganda. <laughs> so I came with the calculator to show you that, that my is, CV is ready. Is I'm ready. Ready. Kindly admit me. Just admit <laughs> You, I am willing to hand over my chairman to you. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> happily taking it for one day, yeah. and then I reverse it we, back to we you. We're equally from the West. Since you're from Western Cape. <laughs> By the way, you are the people from the West are mm -hmm. the same as, um, actually, the kisses mm -hmm. um, are equivalent of the Bachigo of Uganda. Oh, really? Yes. Hey, there's something about you that's being a bit bland and uh, brutally honest. <laughs> so that's we, how life is. We, we've seen what your long-term projection of your life is we've seen the vision that you have for your local uh sports yes uh involvement with yeah. basketball yeah do you intend to diversify that into other sports or you want to concentrate on basketball no the the, the, the jacket dolphins um is um is a match sport mm -hmm. so we start with the basketball and then we go to rugby football netball volleyball hockey those are our plans in the next but first you have to perfect one then you have got a group of companies that yes. is involved in uh, all sorts of things, accounting and things like that. Yeah. How do you intend to run all this? The, my plan is, as I'm expanding in, uh, in my companies, the athletes, actually that's what we are doing now, the athletes themselves work within. So it is uh -huh. good for them to train. It's good for me to get uh, resources in terms of competent staff. The one you can train, you are sure you're going to have a staff for more than five years. Uh, you, you know, when you go to other um, to other companies, a staff is for six months, one year has gone. But now, if uh, you have an athlete who is playing basketball, who is playing football, who is doing other games, who is working for you during training, you allow him to go and train. During mm. sports, you allow him to go and do sports. What kind of human resource are you going to have? Wow! Competent, disciplined, disciplined, focused team. In the next two years, I want to have probably my staff fully in sports. You don't play basketball at all, do you? I don't. It's interesting. <laughs> you have a basketball league team. I don't. And you don't play it. My friend, my partner, Freedom, the founder of JKL, mm. always laughs at me. He was also a footballer. He has never even played basketball also. Not even to all. But we are here. What's your favorite dish, JP? If I was you for house, I'll give you that. Oh, my... Such a note that sour milk and uh, ugali. Man, if you take that marurano, you'll ask for more. Uh, the kissy flavor is not sour. It has some, some balls inside. Oh, really? It's called rikombi in kissy. Very nice. So my favorite will be um, rice, 
and chicken. Nice and chicken. You love the fine things of life. And yes. you wash that down with soda. You told us earlier on. Uh, soda. There's a time when I used to take one crate of soda, but now, but now I've uh, I've changed. I do a lot of juice. Yeah. That's one crate of soda. So if you give me mango down. juice, if you give me mango juice mm -hmm. with um, local chicken, local chicken and rice. Oh, and some greens. Hey. And I will prefer probably skuma week. That will keep you all, keep you kicking for the man, next man. Week. You are, you will make me. <laughs> uh, you know, go to another world. Some things take us off the wrong way and get us angry. Yes. Others make us happy. Yes. What swings you on both sides? What I makes hate, you happy? I hate liars. Mm. You better come and tell me, Jeff. Yes, you will know, be my friend. The Ugandan way? Of this, this, this? Mm. No. I like the way you generalize of the Ugandan way. You've not met one as Ugandan? A few. You're looking at one. Eh? A few. We are not that many, but yeah, yeah. A few. <laughs> That's why you say, I, I, I'm very sure you are, you are, you are, English progress is far much better than mine. That's why I said a, a few. few. <laughs> and what gives you a good laugh? You see, when I started JT sometime in 2010, I wanted to form a group of company. I trusted so fast. So I gave a friend of mine three million shillings. Go and uh, register. register. Yeah. He went downtown and got for me doctored certificate of registration for five companies. So each company was one million, one million, one million. So when I was uh, going to the bank, the bank told me these things are not at URSB. I said, I well, gave somebody to register for me. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> said, I lost back. money. I lost everything. 2010. How? Oh, and I was so young because I wanted to start entrepreneurship early. And you so lost a friend. I lost a friend. Unfortunately, passed on like two years ago. Oh dear. May soul rest in peace. But we meet. But he was also planning to pay back my money. He was saying, Jeff, I'm going to give you back your money. Just be patient. So, genuine people, not only in Uganda, all over the world, there are few. When you get one, all the world. What gets you, what gets you happy? Gives you a good laugh. What makes me happy? What makes me happy? One, when I have performed the task performed or the task given to me. Mm. For example, if you tell me, do for me uh, uh, this assignment. You know, as auditors, we are not supposed to advertise. Uh -huh. uh, we are restricted. If you give me a task and I do it very well and you are satisfied, I become happy. When my team wins, I'm happy. When we play well, I'm happy. When my, my junior staff get promoted, when I see my junior staff reconciling things and they're working, I'm happy. When I pass at school, I'm happy. When I see you succeed, I'm happy. Because when you succeed, I succeed. Wow. Clearly, your job is cut out. Cabinet Secretary, here you come and everything bigger in life because I think you know how to get the right emotions and the words to go along with it to the satisfaction of everyone. JT Nyangenya, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. What a life story. What a life that you have lived in a very short time, but very impactful. We know that we will certainly meet again for this conversation when you have uh, become all that and more that you wished. Yes. How would you love to say Kwaheri to our listeners for the song? But before that, you may not have traveled the breadth and width of our beautiful country, Uganda. But I'm sure you've heard about nice, incredible places many of which, I must dare you, are much better than the places you call beautiful in your native Kenya. If we were to allow you to get marooned somewhere for a weekend, where in Uganda is it that you choose to be and why? I've traveled in Uganda, I'm, and uh, I know Uganda probably more than some Ugandans. Ah, yeah, you could be right. From Kapchorwa, go to... That was in your backyard, come yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, Kapchorwa, up, up near Turkana, go to Kisoro, go to Fort Porto, wow. all through. I would love to go for gorillas. Wow, in Bwindi. In Bwindi. Yeah. I've gone to Kisoro. I've uh, seen some good people there, the pygmies. They're good people. Congo, Rwanda, walk there. That topography, mm -hmm. Tungamo going down. Such a lovely country. You go there, all your streets remain yeah. in Kampala. You, you know, when you reach Masaka, going the other side, you're in a different world. Yeah. 
looks good. So if I would love to, 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 to have a trip, Kampala, Chegegua, Fort Porto, Kasese, come back to Barara, go to Ivanda, go to Tungamo, come back and I'll be at home. Wow. <laughs> you know this place like the back of your hand, eh? Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Hopefully that will happen before you become cabinet secretary. Sure, sure. And I would love to go with you. <laughs> I'll be more than glad. <laughs> you show me I show where you your territory of Western Branch <laughs> small is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Say quite hairy to our listeners. Quite hairy listeners. Mm. Anything you do, trust and obey. So what will be your last song? Trust and obey. Trust and obey. I don't seem to know this one. This one is uh, a hymn. Hymn. Very nice. And they should sing it. Two stanzas and you love it. Wow. You need to trust and obey. Let's get down to it. And it's been a pleasure having you on the program. For you, our viewers and listeners, we can say bigger thank you than we already do words sometimes fail us. You could have been doing something else, but we are glad you're always on the program. Picking up the inspiration that you owe to and listening how people make it, those that distinguish themselves be on the program. Let's meet same time, same place next Sunday with yet another inspirational life story. For now, it's a wrap. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM And with all who will trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM.